Welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. Welcome back to another episode of A Day in the Life at my barbecue food truck. Stay tuned. All right, so it's Thursday morning, February the 2nd, and it is really cold out here right now. It's about 30 degrees, and then on the last video, I showed you guys what we did on a Wednesday. On a Thursday, we prep everything for the upcoming weekend. So if you remember, on Wednesdays, we trim our briskets, which we did yesterday. We also cold smoked our sausages, which you guys saw that on my last video. So on Thursday mornings, we get here about 5.30 in the morning. The first thing I do is light the pit. My brother seasons up the briskets, and we put the briskets and the pork butts inside of our smoker. So we've already boiled the potatoes for our potato salad. We chopped a lot of the vegetables, but there's still a lot of prep work that goes into Thursday. We still have to trim our ribs, grind our burger for our smoked burgers. We have to fire roast our jalapenos, and I'm gonna show you around the park as well. All right, so we're at the firebox now. I'm gonna show you guys how we maintain 275 degrees on this 1,000 gallon bison smoker. And this is my smoker, Caitlin, which is named after my daughter. So I'm gonna open the door here. I just put on two brand new splits and that will maintain the pit usually around 275. When I drop in a couple of new splits, the temperature might spike up a little bit, but it will eventually settle at 275 degrees. Now, as the wood starts to burn, you can see the wood on the top is already kind of burned off a little bit. I, I just rotate the, the wood. If I put two new splits, I put the burnt splits on top of the new splits and the new splits will continue to burn the partially burned splits of wood and that maintains again 275 degrees so let me show you guys the briskets all right sorry about the extra bright picture right here but as you can see we're running at 250 degrees and that's where I want to maintain the briskets right now now this first gauge is a little bit higher but again because I just put on those splits but this temperature will climb up to around 275 stay there for a little bit and then come down to around 250 I like to smoke my briskets at 225 to 250 for about the first eight hours. Once I wrap them, I'll crank the temperature up to 275 degrees. Um, obviously, heat rises, so this top gate is already at 275 degrees, but where the briskets are at, it's around 250 to 275. So let's show you guys the briskets. All right, so there are the briskets. We do have four of them on right now. We've got a couple of pork butts as well. And again, these have been on for probably two to three hours right now. The bark is starting to form. These are prime briskets. And that fat is starting to render. It's getting a nice yellowish color. And I'm gonna talk about why we're only smoking four. I mean, on this big smoker, right? So I'm gonna get into that, the seasonality of barbecue and how it will affect your business when it's cold outside compared to when it's nice and hot. So that's our briskets. I'll bring you guys back in a bit. All right, so right now we're fire roasting our jalapenos and our poblano peppers for our corn salad. The jalapenos, we sell them on the menu. It's a jalapeno toreado, which is a fire roasted jalapeno, and we do it right inside of our fire box. So we just scoot out some of the coals, put a Weber grill grate in my fire box, and we roast away. And again, this is a pretty popular item, believe it or not. Everybody likes a jalapeno with their barbecue, and the fire roasted poblano peppers uh, give our corn salad an amazing flavor and it's really hot. So this is an idea for you guys that have a barbecue business, utilize what you've got. We actually used to take coals out and put it inside the Weber kettle, but this is a much easier uh, thing to do. So just roast them right, right inside your firebox and uh, just make sure you have enough coals and you'll be good. So my brother's doing that right now. I'm going to take you guys inside the trailer and show you a couple more items inside, so stay tuned. All right, so before I take you guys inside the trailer, I want to show you a couple of items that has made my life of owning a food truck easier. This table right here is a stainless steel table by the company Vevor. I used to have a stainless steel table on wheels, and it was just a pain in the neck to use, so I picked this one up from Vevor. And on the last video, I showed you guys a couple of items, which were the food warmers and the pagers that have made our lives extremely easier running a barbecue food truck. 
And this table right here, this is where we wrap our briskets, our ribs, and we pretty much utilize it for everything that we do inside the smoker. Check them out and grab yourself one of these stainless steel tables. They have different dimensions, different sizes, but this is the one that we use here. Obviously we keep it clean. And anytime that we wrap, we wrap under our canopy of the smoker. Yeah, just so that nothing falls into the meat. So it's nice and sanitary. All right, so now we're inside the trailer. Here's a couple more items that I picked up from Vevor. This is where we keep our cornmeal, our flour for my cornbread muffins. And we also store our beans in these containers. So one of the things about owning a food truck that you'll find is that you need space. And I've got things everywhere, as you can see, okay? So we're very limited on space. And even if you have a small space, like this right here in between the register and the refrigerator, you want to utilize that. So I picked these up from Vevor. And again, so if you have any dry ingredients, anything that you need to store, uh, these containers work absolutely amazing. And they do come in three packs and these things are a lifesaver. So we do keep those right next to the refrigerator, but I wanted to show you guys again that these simple containers, these simple items make our lives a lot easier in a barbecue food trailer. All right, so just an update. I believe I mentioned it on my first video, but I used to have a fryer right here next to my griddle. Well, I got rid of the fryer. Um, it was a pain in the neck. We weren't selling a whole bunch of fries. So I ended up getting this cooler from Coke and we are stocking the bottle soda instead of cans. Um, that's one thing that I would recommend, especially in the food truck. We used to have coolers and I used to have canned soda. Well, when you do that, you have to buy ice every single day. And you know, it's only what, $7 worth of ice, but that's $7 that you really don't have to spend. So I picked up this fridge from Coke. This is not a sponsored video by Coke but I utilized the space where my fryer was at. I took that out, sold it the same day, and put a fridge for our sodas. And the customers can see the, the uh, cooler from the window as well, which makes it really easy to sell. They pretty much sell themselves um, because again, the customers can see that. So just an update on that. I did get rid of my fryer. I really don't think a fryer belongs in a barbecue food truck. Some people might argue that, but that's my opinion. Um, I'm not planning on making uh, nacho fries or brisket fries or anything like that. So, you know, I really don't need to fry her. Um, in a barbecue food truck, I don't think there should be anything fried. Um, I do sell a burger and I, and I do get asked if we have french fries. We don't. We have potato chips. And again, the cost of the oil um, and the maintenance of the fryer didn't make sense for my trailer. Um, you know, I was spending $48 for five gallons of oil, and we were lucky if we sold 15 orders of fries. And so the math just wasn't working. Uh, it gets black, it gets smoky in here. The, the vents uh, on the hood get extremely dirty. So for us, it was a lot easier or an easier decision to just get rid of that fryer and put something in its place. So. That's an update on my fryer. All right, so here's my setup of my food trailer. And obviously I keep my pit right next to my food trailer. My brother's over there roasting those peppers that I showed you guys earlier. And I wanna show you guys where we store our wood. Obviously the smoker has a basket on the other side. And I'll show you guys that here in a little bit. But you know, one of the things in owning a barbecue business is where are you gonna store your wood? Uh, especially in the food trailer. You know, you're going to load in back of your pickup truck every day. And luckily, and again, I'm at Buddy's Beer Barn here in El Paso. It's a food truck park. You can see a few other food trucks here. Um, they also own a piece of land. There's a beer barn. You can drive through and get some beer. Um, but they also own this property over here. So I'm going to walk you over there. There's a jumping balloon that they put together for the kids. Um, there's my trailer. I do keep a pallet of wood inside my trailer. Um, try to keep it out of the elements, you know. It doesn't rain a whole lot in El Paso, but if it does, you know, I want, I want some dry wood. But on the other side of this fence is where I store my pallets of wood. Um, I do buy my wood by the trailer load, and I'm using a mixture of post oak and white oak, and I do sell it to the public too. So if they want to buy a, a pallet from me, um, they can easily come and get it from me here. All right, so here's the pallets of wood. And I normally have about 22 pallets in stock, 
right now. I believe I'm down to eight, plus the one that's that we've tapped into right there. But uh, yeah, this whole area is where I keep my pallets. There was two just here a couple days ago, and I sold those. But uh, as you can see, um, this is where I store my firewood. And again, if you're owning a barbecue food truck, this is something that you have to think about. Um, buy, obviously, buying in the trailer load is going to save you some money. But where are you going to store your wood? And I'm lucky enough that per this property, they do own this land next to it. And that's where I store my wood. So, you know, they do charge uh, a small fee to store it here. But they do load the firewood, or the pallets, I should say, um, with their forklift. So that's, a, that's another thing about the awesome people that run Buddy's Beer Barn, is that they even let me borrow their forklift to load the wood uh, when a customer comes and buys it or if I need a pallet over there by the smoker or if I need to load another pallet of wood inside my trailer so here's kind of the setup where I'm at uh, there's a couple of food trucks that are missing right now because um, they're doing pop-ups one of them is a, um, a seafood place uh, they do sell like shrimp cocktails uh, ceviche for those of you guys that like ceviche and he's got some tacos just an amazing menu and then there's a, a lady that sells pizza as well. So she's out doing a pop-up. So their trailers aren't here. Um, there's a taco truck right there. Amazing tacos. And um, got La Bomba that sells uh, birria tacos. He's my neighbor. <laughs> and there's my trailer right there with a the smoker. Uh, Social Ice is over there. They sell a uh, non-dairy ice cream, which is fantastic. Um, but you can actually have them put uh, like cream inside your um, your social ice. Uh, they have really good mangoneadas, they have pian colada, they have a bunch of different flavors, fried Oreos, funnel cakes, best funnel cakes in town, best funnel cakes I've ever had. Um, there's carnivore within the corner, Nietzsche's chicken, she does like Nashville hot chicken. She's got my buddy Matt from the hut, uh, he does burgers and wings and stuff. And as I mentioned, uh, the taco truck in Taquero, again, amazing tacos. So um, I'm going to give this a few hours, guys. We're just going to maintain the pit, and I'll bring you guys back. We grind up our burgers, trim our ribs, and if anything exciting happens. So stay tuned. All right, so it's later in the day, and as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to show you guys how we grind our brisket trimmings for our smoked burgers. Now, this is the meat dual grind okay which means it's got two grinding plates in there this is the 10 millimeter so these go right here on this auger so the 10 millimeter goes on the inside just like that then we have your blade and the numbers go on the outside okay just in case you're wondering and here's the 4.5 millimeter die. This one goes on the outside. So essentially, it's grinding twice in one pass, which is really neat because I hate grinding ground beef twice because it tends to smear if you don't keep it cold. So you have to keep it really nice and cold. It does a great job. So just cinch it down a little bit. I'm gonna turn the grinder on. Actually, I'm gonna drop a couple of pieces down there and then we'll turn the grinder on. Check this out. So if you do this slow enough, you don't really have to use the uh, this plunger deal, okay? Just make sure you cut your pieces nice and small. This is not like my 1.5 horsepower that can handle almost a whole cow. So that's how we grind our brisket trim down into burger. You can see the pieces we cut off. We try to run about an 80-20 burger, okay? So that's how we do that. Then we separate the meat, we weigh the meat, we separate it by the number, or we divide it by the number of days that we're gonna be open, and that's gonna dictate the amount of burgers that we're gonna cook. So it's usually, I don't know, 10 to 15 smoked burgers per day, depending on how much uh, ground beef we have. But that's how we do it, with a meat dual grind. 
Check out the links below if you guys are interested in getting one of these. I'll bring you guys back in a bit. All right, so the briskets have been smoking for nine hours. I'm gonna show you guys how I wrap my briskets. And here's number one. You can see we have some really nice bark. And all I'm looking for right now is color, okay? I really don't care what the internal temperature is, but I know some of you guys will ask. So let's get an internal temperature. We're at 179, right in the middle of the brisket, and that's perfect. So we don't use any tallow here at Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. I've got uh, apple cider vinegar and water, just like I use in all of my videos. Spray it down. Just like that. And here's how I wrap my briskets. We can call this the Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue method of folding the paper over the brisket. I like to tuck this corner in, just like this, and this corner, just like that, okay? Now I fold the paper over. I'm using two sheets of 18 inch butcher paper, and we flatten out the butcher paper, just like that. Roll it over once, the fat cap is on the bottom, then we fold the excess butcher paper, just like that and then we fold it over one more time. That gives you a nice, tight, wrapped brisket. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys one more. So here's my two sheets of 18 inch butcher paper. We like to put the brisket right in the center. Here's another gorgeous looking brisket. Spritz it down. And again, the only indication that I use to wrap is the color of the brisket. That's it. Tuck the corner in, tuck the corner in, fold the paper over, fold the paper over, nice and tight. Fat cap is on the bottom. Fold the excess paper. Bring you guys in closer. Fold the excess paper and then turn the brisket one more time. And you have a nicely tight wrapped brisket. All right, so it's five o'clock in the evening, 5 p.m. And one of the last things we gotta do is brine our chickens. And I do have my chickens, we split them in half. And these are big, these are borderline turkeys. But um, we brine them the day before. So I'm gonna give you guys a secret. I use half a cup of kosher salt and four cups of water. And I just stir this, try to dissolve the salt. And this is cold water. And it probably takes eight cups of water, maybe eight to 12 cups of water to fill this tub. So I've got six chicken halves or three chickens in this bucket here. So try to dissolve it as much as possible and fill up this bucket. So we played around with our brine. We actually used to use a whole cup of salt to about 10 to 12 cups of water. And we found that the chicken was too salty. So we scaled that back to half a cup of salt. Real simple brine, nothing to it. No seasoning, anything like that. We season after the brine. So this will sit in the brine overnight. We cover it in plastic, then we cover it in foil, pop it in the fridge, and these will be ready tomorrow morning. So again, I'm gonna cover this up, pop it in my fridge, and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, guys, so it's six o'clock. I still got a couple more hours. Again, the briskets have been smoking for 12 hours right now. They usually smoke for about 14 hours and they hit about 199, 200 degrees right in the middle of the brisket. That's when I pull them, let them rest for a little bit and uh, pop them in my warmer. But uh, from this point, it's just a waiting game. Uh, the pork is done, so I've already pulled that and put it inside the warmer. So now it's just, again, the waiting game. We kind of kick back and wait for the briskets to be done and head out for the night. So as you can see, it's a very long day. Uh, we've been here since 6 a.m. this morning, so I've been here 12 hours. I'll probably work about 15 hours today, and all of our prep is done. I showed you some of the prep, but I wanted to show you guys what we do on a Thursday. Um, if you guys are liking this series, this type of video, kind of a day in the life of my food truck, let me know. Um, and I might even do a Friday when we're open for business, and you can see how we prepare some of the dishes, maybe see some of the customers, 
etc. So let me know if you're liking this type of video. Um, one of the things that I also want to do, and you guys let me know what you guys think, uh, I want to interview each owner of the food trucks here at Buddy's Beer Barn and talk about their most popular food item or menu item. And uh, let me know if that's something that you guys want to see as well down in the comments below. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions related to food truck uh, business, let me know. Leave them in the comment section. Until next time, Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. See ya.